Hi, welcome to the Introstat lecture series. And uh, this is the lecture number six in the unit of the testing hypothesis. So this is the video number three when we talk about the standard deviation as ruler and the normal models here. Okay, so like uh, uh, in the lecture, in the second video, we talk about that, uh, when the z-score equal to a specific values, right? One, two, three, or negative one, negative two, negative three. So we talk about the normal uh, 68, 95, and the 99.7 rule. Okay, so that means one standard deviation, two standard deviations, or three standard deviations. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, how to use the technology to help us, you know, to find those values here. Okay, so let's continue. So the video number two, we stop it here. We talk about the, like, uh, you know, the 68, 95, and 99.7 rules here. Okay, so now for this one here, we going to find the normal percentile or the probability of the normal distributions here. So we say we have the, you know, the three different divide, three different ways to do that. So the first ones here, we can use the Z table. That means this one's here, it will be on the appendix D in your book here, right? So let's take a look what is the, this table looks like. So if you go to the appendix D and then in here, you will see this is the Z table. We have two, you know, two tables here. One is here, you see this is what is your Z score, right? So this is your Z score values here, okay? So this is all the negative. So if you're going down, so if you find the Z scores here, this is all negative see here. And be very careful, you know, when you look the um, the tables here, this is what uh, we need to be watching is. So in here, as you can see the, you know, the your table shaded this side. That means, uh, this is the area I'm looking for, all right? So the table value is, this is the value I'm looking for. So let's take a look here. So like uh, if I said, uh, I want to find, uh, okay, three, negative 3.19, 3 3.13 here, okay? So this values, right? So it's negative 3.1, 0.1 is the first decimal. Now here, this is the second decimal. So now if you look here, this is a negative 3.13. So as you can see, I have these values here, 0 0.0009. What's that mean? That means this area here is 0 0.0009. Okay, so the table value give you, this is what all these values here, this is what I call this, the table values, right? So the table value give you the left tail, you know, the left-hand side of your z-scores here, okay? So this is the, so if you have the positive z-score, let's take a look here. So if you have a positive z-score, there will be the next pages here. You see here, those are the positive z score. So that means still you look at the graph very carefully, right? So this graph show you, hey, this is the area I'm looking for, right? So this is the table values here, okay? So now if I say I want to find a one pointer, Okay, 1.25, let's say 1.25 here. So this is 1.2, the first decimal, then this column is 05. So 1.25, you have the number 0.8944. What's that mean? That means that here, this is your z scores, right? So this is 1.25. Then the A944 is this area, so on the left-hand side of your z scores, right? So this one here is a pointer. A944. Okay, so that is how do you find the 
you know, in the uh, by using the Z table. So you can look at the table. And uh, as you can see, if your Z value, if your Z score has a three decimal point, so then, then you probably need to use approximation to do that. Okay. Then we can also look at the, you know, the by using the TI calculator to do that, or TI-84 calculator, or use the R's here. So that's what is the table about. Okay, so now let's take a look here. Okay, so the, like, uh, so let's go back uh, to our, uh, let's go back to the, let me see here, so, all right, so let's go back to our lecture notes here, okay? So that's what we said is using the Appendix D. Now I'm going to fill in these two blanks here after we try it. Okay, so now let's take a look at this problem here. They said, uh, find the probability that the given the z-score. You know, when we do this type of the problems here, we typical, it will be easier, you just draw a picture. So you know exactly which area you're looking for. So this is Z, so it's zero, right? So it's one sigma, two sigma, like we say. So this is 1.99, right? So this is my, so this is my Z scores, right? So I say, I want to greater than 1.99. So which area I'm looking for? Ah, I'm looking for this area here, correct? Okay, so for this area here, and now let's see here. So like uh, if I want to find the, by using the, you know, the Z table we have here. So I'm going to, you know, for this example here, I'm going to show you how to use the Z table. And, uh, but then the next, uh, Next one's here. I'm not, I'm just going to uh, directly use the TI-84 calculator or the R code to do that. So this is 1.99, right? So let's get to find the 1.99 first, okay? 1.9, right? So 1.99. So if you find the 1.9 here, okay, 1.9. 1.99, so this column is here. So it's 9767, 9767, right? So this is 0.9767. Okay, so remembers, right? So remembers here, if you use the tables, right? So it's always in the left-hand side of the areas, correct? Okay, so now what we can do here, so let's go back. Uh, to our, okay, so let's go back to our worksheets here. All right, so the worksheets here. Okay, so 1.99, so remembers, right? So what do we see here? 1.99, I find is 9767, correct? All right, so here, this is from the Z table. So I find it's 9767. But where is the 9767 here? Where is the 9767? Ha, ah, but remember, right? So we said the Z table is always give you the this area on the left hand side. So I know the Z table give you this is a point. Uh, Nine seven six seven. I'm sorry, six seven. Right, six seven. Right, nine seven six seven. Here, right. So because that's what the table. So I know the probability of the Z. You want to find it's a yellow area. One point nine nine will be what? Will be one minus point nine seven six seven. That's right. So this will give you point oh two three three. Right? Okay, so you use one to minus it. Okay, so now the same thing, I'm going to use the, let's take a look at how do I use the TI-84 calculator, and then we can write it down, the function we use here, right? Let's go ahead to go to find the calculator. Okay, so the, for the calculators here, you can turn that on. 
Okay, so I clear out the. Okay, so let's see here. Let's uh, quit this. Okay. Okay, so you clear that. Okay, so in order to find that, so I'm going to say second. All right, now you just see that this uh, blue one DISTR distribution. Okay, then you go down the second one, you call the normal CDF. See here. Okay, the normal CDF. Okay, so this is where the lower bound and the upper bound we're going to find. So right now for this problem, I'm going to find 1.99, the yellow area, like a while ago we said. So the lower bound really is 1.99, right? So let's uh, clear that one. So we'll say 1 point, so you can 1.99. Okay, and then the upper bound, as you see a while ago, the graph I showed, right? So the you know, the why I got the graphs here, you know, the, the graphs uh, I did a while ago like this, right? So we say here, and this is the area we're looking for, right? So the upper bound is a continue and uh, to the, you know, they never end, right? So that's why the upper bound, we put this, okay? So this is uh, how do we put the upper bound? So we put, we do the, Alpha, then E, all right, that means uh, it's a 10 to the power, then you to the plus, then you put a 99, okay? So this is kind of like the fixed. So this, you just need to remember, this is how do I input when the upper bound is continuous going. So that's how do you want to input. Okay, now, the same thing is here, then because this is Z, so it's zero ones, right? So you can say, Okay, now I'm coming down, coming down, coming down, right? And then the, after you come down see here, then you say, okay, let's see what happened to my values here. See here, 0 0.02329, so it's 0 0.233, right? If you round it, so it's the same value like we did by using the table. That's cool, okay. So now let's quit this one see here, okay? All right, so now let's go back uh, to our worksheets here, the lecture notes here. Okay, so now let's try to write here, right? So the, how do I, uh, what do I, do I need to do to find the, how do I use the TI-84 calculator? So the key you need to hit is the seconds, right? And then you find the DSTR. I think it's a DS, uh, what is the that? It's the uh, DISTR. Okay, so it's a DISTR. So the here is uh, DISTR. Okay, so it's a DISTR. Then after you go that, you find the second one, then you say it's the normal CDF, right? So this is the second option, so normal CDF. Then you input the upper bar and the lower bar. Cool? Okay, now the, okay, so now let's take a look. You know, so this is how do you use the TI-84. So like all the remaining problems here, when you do that, it will be, you know, pretty easy. Like I said, I'm not going to use the table because the table takes a, a long time, you know, to find it. And then sometimes you need to minus, uh, plus, low things, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at the R. R is even easier, okay? So let's see here. So this is my R studio. Okay, so in here, the way you do the R, what the function you use? You use the X P N O R A, right? Then you input this is one point nine nine. That's your z score. Then you can put a mean equal to zero and S D equal to one because z score is mean equal to zero and z S D equal to one. Okay. Now you see here, right? So it's pretty cool, right? So now they, they, you don't even need to tell them it's a great name or less name. They did, they give you the all the, what? They give you 
all the options you could have see here. So like in here, right? So that's why they even calculate it for you. So they say, okay, for this one's here, you can have uh, X uh, is less than, that means this area is 0 0.9767. Or you can calculate that the X is greater than, is this area, right? So it's greater than. So based on my graph, which one's here, answers here? Oh, here is 0 0.0233, right? That's pretty cool, right? So like, uh, so R, they can give you the both so as soon as you put the one, the Z scores here, all right? Okay, so that's why the Z, so, okay, so let's go back to our, okay? So how do you do that? So the R, the, you know, the R, the command is pretty easy. So you put it here, you say XP, N O R M, that's right? And then here, this is 1.99. And then here, you can say mean equal to zero and SD equal to one, all right? So of course here, this is what is your Z-score you want to find, right? And then the R will give you a function and you compare to what the area you're looking for. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, now let's take a look at the second ones here. Let's see how can we very efficiently use uh, our technologies here. So like we say, always what? Always graph, see, right? The graph will give you a good idea of where you're looking for. So this is zero, and uh, this is 1.4, and this is two. Right now it says in between, in between, so which area I'm looking for? Ah, it's this area, right? So it's this area. So now let's take a look, okay? So this is the 1.4 and the two here, all right? So let's take a look of what, uh, you know, how do I input here by using the TI-84 calculators here? All right, so let's see here, let's go back to my calculator. Okay, see my calculator now? Okay, so here, turn the calculator on, clear that, All right? So let's try one more time. Second, DSTR, go down to the normal CDF, right? So the lower, right now you see the bound is 1.4 to two. So you clear the lower bound, so it's 1.4. Then the upper bound is two, so you clear that, so this is a two. And still is a zero and a one. And what is here? So what is the answer you will get is 0 0.580. That's right. So this will be the 0 0.05800, right? Okay, so let's try to remember that. All right, so let's try. Okay, so let's... Uh, that's here, so we said uh, from the TI-84, it's pretty fast, right? So, yes, okay, so from the TI-84 calculator, I got the value is 0 0.058. Oh, 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 right? Okay, now let's take a look at the R. How do I input if I have the intervals here, right? So let's go to the R's here. All right, so this is how I'm going to input here because I have the interval. So that's why I'm inputted. I still use SP norm, normal, right? So now I have a count, I have an interval, so I put a C. So that means in here, I put my interval, it's 1.4 comma two, right? Okay, and then you still do the same. You say the mean equal to zero and uh, SD equal to one. Okay, boom. All right, so let's see here, right? So in here, they give you all the values here. You see here? So they give you all the values, it's pretty cool, right? So they tell you here, let's see here. Okay, so red color, maybe it's a good one. Okay, so they give you the older values is, uh, you know, like uh, less than, 
So here they give you the less than value. They give you the greater than values here. But then you look at your graph, you know, which area you're looking for? Ha, huh, you're looking for this area. Ha, huh, right? So in between, hey, this color, hey, see here, 0 0.058, right? So that is exactly like what we got from the PI-84 calculator. So that's pretty, you know, so it's very fast to try to use R, try to get the area. They even, the best one is they even show you a graph. So that's why I say you need to graph it and then you'll be able to get the answer very easily. All right. Okay. So that's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty, very, very handy tools, right? Okay. So now let's take a look. So the R will give you the, what? The R will give you the, the same things here, right? So the R here will give you the same things. And the R, the code you will use is still XP known. And then you put in here. So the things you different, you put a C here. Then you say this is a point, uh, no, this is 1.4. I'm sorry, here, then that's no negative. So you put your interval in here, right? Okay. So you see here, this is 1.42. Then you say mean equal to zero, SD equal to one, right? So be careful. So you use this statement to C, right? Include your intervals here. Okay, so now let's try to take a look at the other ones here. So the other ones here is a negative point, uh, 0 0.51 to 0 0.3. Remember always graph. So this is a zero negative. So should it be here, right? So it's a negative of 0 0.51. Okay, so this is negative 0 0.51 and uh, 0 0.3. Okay. So let's say in between, so which area I'm looking for? Huh, I'm looking for this area, all right? So I'm looking for this area. Okay, so now let's take a look. How do I do in my calculator and the R here? Okay, let's go to ahead, go to my calculators here. Okay, so now turn that all back on, clear that. All right, so let's try one more time. So it's the second, DISTR, go to normal, okay? And uh, now it's a negative point, uh, 0 0.51. Be careful, you know, like uh, when you put a negative, don't just put this negative, you know, the minus sign because the TI-84, the negative, you have to push this sign here. So you put a negative 0 0.51, okay? If you put this sign here, it will not work, okay? Then the up bound here is what is the point three. Then you go here, da da, and boom. What is here? So you will get is a point. Okay, so a point of negative point of five one. So you will get a point three one two eight eight. Okay, so let's go back to our worksheets. So the by using the TI calculator. Okay, so by using the TI calculator, you will get a point three one two a a two a or two nine. You rounded three one two nine. See here. Now let's try one more time for the what for the R to see we have the same answer or not, okay? So let me go back to the my R. All right, so remember, you know, how do we get the previous command back so we don't need to continue type? You can use your up arrow, so boom, right? So if I use my up arrows here, and uh, then the, you will get the, your comments back, or if not, you can just type it, you can say XP, no, right? So let's try one more time. So it's a C. So now what is my value is 0 0.0.51. 
and uh, point three. Correct. Okay, then in here you do the same thing. You say mean equal to zero, SD equal to one. Then you boom. Ah, it's good, right? So it's here. Okay, so now they give you the value, but I know I'm looking for in between here, correct? So which part is this part is the area I'm looking for. And then here, hey, they give you it's 0.3129. It's just exactly the same as what the TI calculator show you. And the R is quite a user friendly, right? They even give you this nice graph and then just one simple command, you can do that. Okay, so that's it. Let's take a look. I think we have a couple more. Okay, yeah, we have one last one here, right? Okay, so the last one is Z brightening 0 0.021, okay. So here, this is, uh, this is zero. This is negative 0.21. So negative is here, 0.21. Okay, so look here, they say it's a greatness, right? So greatness, so which area I'm looking for greatness? This area is here, right? Greatness. All right, so this area. Okay, now let's go to my calculator to see we can Let's try to do a pen one more time to see if I get the same answers here. Okay, so now let me go back to my TI calculator. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so clear that. All right, so let's do one more time. Second DISTR, go to the normal CDF. Okay, now my lower bound, remember the graph we show a while ago, you know, the graph we had a while ago is like this, right? So we are going to find this area, right? So my lower bound is what? My lower bound will be what? My lower bound will be negative 0.21. Remember, negative, you need to push this sign. So it's negative 0.21. Okay, now the up here, the up is continue go into the infinity. So we need to put this E99 things, right? So we say the alpha, right? Then find the E, okay? Then you say plus 99, 99, all right? Then you do a pace and then boom, boom. So what is the answer is 5A366, all right? Okay, so it's a five A three six six. Okay, so now in here, I got it. So it's from the TI eighty four calculator. I can get this is a point of five A three or oh, three one six. So I can round it to the five A three two. Okay, now let's take a look. Uh, the last thing here, let's use R. Right, so the R is the same thing. I really like the, for this one, you know, for those uh, to use R is a lot easier, right? So you say, okay, so what do we type here? XP, no, right? And then because, you know, it doesn't have the interval, I don't need to use C, I just type in negative 0.21. Oh, be careful, it's not a comment. So 0.21, and then you say mean, equal to zero SD equal to one. And uh, now you go, ha, huh. right? So we say it's a great name, point to one. So which area is I'm looking for? Ah, this one see here, right? So it's a great name. So now you can go to here, say great name, where to this one is a great name. Hey, it's a 5832, ha. Huh. It's exactly the same, like, uh, you know, like uh, what I find in the TI calculators so here, right? So for the R's, so we'll give you, is it exactly the same is the point of 5A32. So the R's here will give you the point of 5A32 also, all right? So that's why, you know, the, you know, for these four problems, we'll just show you, you know, you can use the table or you can use the chair calculator or, you know, you can use the R to run it. It's really pretty easy.
to get it. Okay, and uh, we're going to stop the here. And uh, then our next video, we're going to talk about how to find the z-score. If they tell you the area of the, you know, the, the area value or the probability value, what is the z-score? How do I find the z-score? Okay, that will be our last video for this lecture. All right, let's see it. And uh, so it's a pretty easy, right, by using the technology. I hope that you will have, a, you know, you'll be able to use your TI-84, or if you don't have TI-84, go to the R, and you will be able to find the value easily. Okay, that's it, okay? And then let's talk to you and talk to you in the, our next videos, okay? Bye.